Before we get into this, I want you to know that no Steam Decks were harmed in the making of this video. I want to thank the sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Click the link in the description or pinned comment below to get a 30 day free trial to level up your skills by learning to do practically anything from experts over at Skillshare. I love the Steam Deck. I have experienced so many games on the go, games that I didn't even think were possible to experience on the go, and it's essentially blown my mind. This is the same feeling, that same experience that I got from the Nintendo Switch when it first launched. I was just blown away that I was playing Breath of the Wild on the go. Now that I've had the Steam Deck for a little bit and I've experienced everything that it can offer, I wanted to see what constraints were there. What was it that I could change to make it a better experience for me? And that's where I said, you know what, let's upgrade the SSD. Let's see what we can do in order to make this a better experience for me. And boy, this was fun. So obviously like anyone else, I went online, I Googled and I looked online in order to see what was the best SSD that I could find, the best bang for my buck, so to speak. And I ended up going with the Sabrent Rocket one terabyte. Now I didn't get a two terabyte because I'm not made of money guys. Like do you, you guys see the subscriber count on this video. Like, uh, you know, it's not a lot. I'm still growing, but when it came down to it, I was like, you know what? Like, I this is enough. One terabyte is fine for me, plus a one terabyte micro SD card. And I also have a 512 gigabyte micro SD card that I have where all my ROMs are stored at. But I digress. I went ahead and I ordered it, and I waited about a week. It finally shipped and like arrived at the house, and I started installing it almost immediately. I had the camera set up, everything was going. And I took the backplate of the Steam Deck off with relative ease. I started going through things and it's a relatively easy process to change your SSD in the Steam Deck itself. There are plenty of videos online. I was following the iFixit guide in order to get everything situated, but I ran into a problem. See, I removed the backplate. I had all of the screws stored on the side. Everything was going fine. And I finally got to this heat plate that was there that protected the SSD as well as some other internal components and the battery connector on the what I'm assuming is the motherboard. Regardless, I took that apart and I was unscrewing things and then there was this bottom screw in the bottom left-hand corner of that plate that just was screwed on a little tiny bit too tight. And I ended up stripping the screw. I was scared. I was like, you know what, is, is this, is this okay? Is this fine? Let me put a little tiny bit more force and then it popped. And I was like, oh God. This is it. This this is the worst thing ever. This is I don't I don't want this, but whatever. So I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, crap, I'm, I'm screwed. Like the, the video is dead. Like there's nothing that I can do now to fix this. I cannot change my SSD like the, the, that. Like I can't do that. I can't access it without actually removing this plate. So what I do, I went to, you know, good old friend Google and I asked, what are the best ways to take out a strip screw? Most of the recommendations that were there were for like larger screws, like things that you would use to like build things or like construction, not something that you would have like in the motherboard, for instance. So I ended up going to, once again, I fix it. And they had different steps and procedures in terms of how you can figure out what the best way is to get this script, stripped screw out. And the deeper that you went, the more crazy it got. So obviously the first thing that everyone recommends and the first thing like I knew was to use a rubber band to pretty much get in there and add like a little bit of grip. So you have a little bit more grip to actually remove it. I ended up puncturing a bunch of holes into my rubber band, which that didn't help. Then after that, the next thing that they recommended was to use super glue to essentially super glue your screwdriver into the screw itself so that there could be a mold that was formed. And once it dried, you could go ahead and, you know, use that to have a little bit more grip and be able to get some traction and ruin things. That didn't work, it didn't work at all. So I looked online and the next step that was on iFixit's website was to use either, um, a needle nose pliers or some form of pliers to, to kind of just get the screw going. Well, this is a very, very small screw. If you've opened the back end of a Steam Deck, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those things are super small. And the closest thing that I had to it was, were these things. So I, I couldn't, like I tried. It just, it didn't happen. In the middle of all this, my camera was running out of battery. Everything just shut off and I was like, okay, What's the next thing? What, what is the next thing that's there? 
And the next thing that was there was a rotary tool. For those of you that do not know, a rotary tool is something that spins really fast and like you can use that to cut through things, either polish or cut, or um, sometimes you can use it to like scrape or clean, but it's a rotary tool, so it's extremely fast. And I was like, you know what? Like, what's the, what's the worst that could happen at this point? What, gen genuinely, like I, I have, you know, I have control over it. I can make something happen. So I said, you know what? Screw it. Let's give it a shot. Put on my safety glasses, my safety goggles or whatever, and I went into it. Little did I know that there was going to be sparks that were literally flying from the Dremel as I was cutting into this little tiny screw. Well, the piece that is used to cut metal with the Dremel was probably three quarters of the size of the top of the screw as is. So I couldn't really get like a good grip on it or I couldn't really actually get like a good amount of like a, a wedge to actually cut through it. So I was like, you know what, screw it. Like, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of the, the entire top of the screw and see what happens. Because of the heat that was generated from me doing that, the screw itself and that back plate merged into one. So I couldn't actually remove the actual back plate when the top of the screw was gone. It was all essentially melted together. So I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, I, I can't remove this. There's no way that I can actually get it out. I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna see if I can like jiggle it off and maybe it'll, it'll, it'll pop off. Well, I start doing that and boom, the back plate literally because of the heat just goes ahead and like folds open it, it, it i was blown away by how this actually worked and there lo and behold i had access to the ssd i had access to the power cable that connected the the power the whole thing that was connected to the battery and i said you know what screw it i'm just gonna go ahead and do everything else the way that i should have done it now and then when i'm done i'm just gonna put everything in reverse screw everything back into place and just go from there the one thing that I had in the back of my head though, was did I screw anything up with the motherboard? All these sparks are flying around. Did something get burned? Did, did something get ruined? Because you know, th there's not that much space there. So I'm afraid that I could go ahead and make this worse by doing that. Well, for those of you that have installed uh, an SSD onto the Steam Deck, you know what I'm talking about. But for those of you that don't, you need to essentially flash Steam OS back onto the SSD. So there's the BIOS that's there, you can access that, and it's relatively easy. But once that's done, you have to flash it, and there's little noises that go ahead and play. You know when you turn on your Steam Deck, there's a little bleep, bleep. Well, there was no noise. And the instructions say it takes a little bit of time, like, don't worry, it's fine. But, dude, I was sweating bullets. Like there, there was there was no way around it. Like I was extremely like just stressed out because I didn't know whether or not this was actually going to work. So I'm sitting there waiting for this and waiting for this and waiting for this and nothing happened. So I was like, crap. I waited like 10, 15 minutes and nothing happened. I was like, crap, man. Like, what am I gonna do? What What is it that I'm going to present? Like there, there was just nothing that I could do. And then I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know what, M maybe I can, you know, hook this up to my computer and maybe I could like mess with like some backend stuff or I, I don't even know. So I plugged it in to the Steam Deck dock and like I, I waited a few seconds and I pushed the power button and I heard the freaking chime and I was so excited because I was like, oh, it's finally working. This is great. So I, I still have the USB that's like sitting here. Guys, I, I've been sitting on the Steam Deck like I, I, I've been gaming on it for about a week just to like make sure that it's actually running. I, I quickly flashed SteamOS, got everything set up, installed everything, and got it running. Now, the next question, the reason why I waited on actually making this video and why I waited on actually doing anything with this whole piece of content was because I wanted to see whether or not there was heat that was affected by what, by what I did. As far as I can tell, the heat levels are relatively the same. I'm still getting around 65 degrees Celsius for most games on the AMD APU. It still seems to be running fine. I don't have any issues with that. But overall, 
I don't think that I'm ever going to open up the Steam Deck again. Like it's done. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm not gonna mess with it at all. So moral of the story, do not listen to what I did. Just use it as a precaution. So if, if you get a little bit of resistance, hold back. Don't let that be like a huge thing. And, and maybe figure some other way to like actually get it. Don't strip your screws, guys. Just don't do it. <laughs> but yeah, guys, there's there's literally nothing that I can do about this. I'm just, I'm gonna take the L. I, I the L is mine. No one else can take the L. But let me know if you have any comments or questions or anything like that down below. Um, and if you wanna hear my review of the Steam Deck, uh, click this video over here. If you wanna hear my review of the Steam Deck versus every Nintendo Switch, click this video over here. I will see you on the next one. Until next time, guys. Peace.